Welcome to the Wilson Combat YouTube channel and the gun guys. Ken, let's talk about our very first firearms. What, what was the very first firearm you ever had? Uh, Marlin 39, by the way, I still have it. Marlin 39 Mountie. Oh, the Mountie. Yeah. Awesome. Still have it. Um, and I shot, I mean, I shot it so much that I eventually wore the, the ejector out, had to replace it. But I still have it. I think it's got a loop, an old red field or old old uh, Weaver, like a K three power on it. Been on it for a long time, but great gun. I mean, how about what was your first rifle? I uh, can't remember the model number, but it was the Mossberg. Remember that Mossberg did the semi-auto that had the plastic fold down oh, yeah. forearm. You know, oh, that was a cool guy gun back oh, then. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, Dad gave me that that rifle, a brick of ammo, and basically said. You know, don't put your eye out. That was that was my instruction. Oh yeah. You know, and I went straight down. The, you know, where we lived, there's a creek uh, just across the road from the house. I went down to the creek down there, and didn't even put anything in there to shoot at. Loaded that puppy up. Oh yeah. You know, to, just making the water splash. You know. Yeah. Didn't yeah. have me no time to go through that brick brick of twenty two oh, shells. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, I was I was I was, I was Al Capone, man. Yeah. <laughs> How about your first uh, handgun? Um, high standard Sentinel. The revolver. What, what, yeah, wasn't wasn't the greatest of handguns. I mean, it was that was never a, a, a fantastic little revolver, but that was four inch barrel. That that was my very first handgun. Mine was a K twenty two. I oh, bought okay. it when I was fourteen years old. I worked all summer, all kinds of jobs. I mean, mowing grass, catting at the country club, which I hated, scraping paint. And paint. Oh, bottom line, I remember my my mentor Charlie Gillis was the old guy that lived next door was a gun guy, and he's the one that got it for me. I think it was $67.50. By the way, I still have that K-22. Awesome. And that's really how I learned. I mean, I, it's like you. I had a, I remember I had a job in high school. I worked after school every night, except Wednesday and all day Saturday in a paint store. I was a stock boy, mm -hmm. and I made $10.50 a week. And that's basically, that was, I didn't get an allowance. I had to, you know, but I could buy a brick of 22 ammo, like back and then it was around $4.75 a brick. And I would I'd get on my bike, I rode, I didn't, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't 16, and it wouldn't matter 16, I didn't have a car anyway, but bottom line, I'd ride my bike on the way home, I'd stop at a place called Longfellow Sporting Goods and I would buy a brick of 22s. And I'd shoot those things up by the next payday. And then that left me, you know, about $6 for, other expenses to get me through the week, but boy, I shot a ton of ammo through that thing, and like I can say I still have it. And I every once in a while I dig it out and go, yeah, this is kind of what where I got my my start. So, uh, well, you started off with top quality stuff. Sounds like you I, know, I did. I, mean, I, was, I, yeah. I, I was fortunate yeah. in that sense. Um, my dad, in many ways, wasn't a big gun guy, but he did kind of believe in a you know buy the good, hmm. you know, good quality stuff. And it turns out when he was a kid, their family had a Marlin 39 rifle, which back in the, you know, in the 20s, you could buy a suppressor. And it was an old Maxim suppressor on it. And that was kind of the gun they had to shoot everything that was imaginable. I mean, uh, during the Depression, it said it wasn't uncommon in the city to slip down early in the morning to the, like the city park and shoot a squirrel or two, you know? Yeah. And so that thing, he was, that was the gun he grew up on. And so when it came time to get a 22 rifle, he thought when I said, I, I wanted the cowboy lever action mm -hmm. kind of thing. So he didn't have any objection, but you're right. They were more expensive guns in that era. Oh yeah, that lasted a lifetime basically, you know? My, yeah. my shooting buddy, I remember his pistol because he was somewhat limited in, in, in money, Went out and bought a Ruger Standard 22 automatic. They were thirty-seven dollars and fifty cents. Earlier one. Yeah, and you know what's interesting? People ask me today about, hey, I want to buy a the Ruger 22 automatic, standard automatics. They're now on what Mark IV. Mm -hmm. They've went through. This is the fourth generation. But you know what? For the money, they're still great guns. Oh yeah, they are. Well, one thing I learned from that semi-auto rifle, you know, I have to tell off on myself a little bit. I, I know you. it's going to be hard for you to believe because you know me from the old days, you know, the fast cars and the long hair and, you know, a little bit of alcohol and that kind of stuff oh. going on, you know. Yeah. I actually, when I when I was young and, and I had that semi-auto, I was actually responsible enough after I had it for a few months to realize I'm never going to learn how to shoot with this thing because I don't have the willpower to not just keep pulling the damn trigger. <laughs> and so, 
back then, as you know, when we could just go in in the hardware store and buy a gun, it was pre pre sixty pre sixty eight. You know, so uh, I went to the local hardware store and I traded that thing for a Stevens single shot, and that's the rifle that I actually learned how to shoot with. Wow. You know, and then kind of to follow in your footsteps after that, I always wanted the lever action Marlin too, and I always wanted the Mounty. Well, nobody, I could never, none never of the people ever, ever stocked those. And so I ended up buying the 39A, the 24 inch barrel one. And and that's probably the rifle that I truly learned how to shoot on. Just like you, I mean, I shot a blue gazillion rounds through it and shot everything in Northwest Arkansas that, that flew, yeah. swam. Flew, crawl, or swam, it, right. It, yeah, know, right. Yeah. I mean, and every yeah. wal walnuts off the, when, when I couldn't find anything, any game to shoot at, I, we had a bunch of walnut trees on the property. I'd go down and shoot walnuts, oh, yeah. walnuts off the tree. So yeah, I remember with my Marlon, one, my sidekick Mike Patterson, and I we didn't gig frogs. We shot them with 20, yeah. <laughs> twenty-two. We took out the frog legs, but yeah, um, you know it's kind of interesting. And and people ask me all the time about, hey, what when you think about what's a great twenty-two pistol? And my pick, first pick, and I still think if I could only own one, it's a Smith K22, what they call the Model 17. Mm -hmm. I had a six inch one. It, what would be your number one pick of a 22 handgun? I mean, it's kind of a modern design, but I really like the Browning Buckmark. Yeah, and, I, and I think Good. it's it's because, you know, all the ergonomics are just the same as the 1911. 1911. You know, and, and I've had several of them. I've, I've used them out in the, like out west shooting ground squirrels and stuff like that. Shot thousands and thousands of rounds of them. And they're just totally dependable and, and very accurate. You know, you know, and so I'm, I'm kind of a big fan of the Browning button. Yeah, you know what? I've got one, suppressed one, that I bought. You know, you, mm -hmm. the model came with, you could add a suppressor yeah. to it. And you're right, they're pretty cool guns. You know, uh, again, my old buddy, Charlie Gullis, the guy that kind of got me headed down the road, he had a Cole Woodsman. And that was probably the first handgun I ever fired, in you know, a rim fire. Mm -hmm. And when he passed, I managed to get that. It came to me, and I still have it. And you know, there's... And when you really look at a Cole Woodsman size, they're really an elegant, well-made, beautiful mm -hmm. handgun, and they're, they shoot superbly. Oh, yeah. It's kind of sad that they've passed, and there's a whole generation or two of people now that never had a chance to fire one a little handle one, and they kind of missed out because they are, and you know, they're still somewhat, if you don't want a mint condition one, they're still out there, and there's, and often if you're willing mm -hmm. to put up with some blue wear and stuff, they're still reasonably priced. Yeah. How about your experience with Ruger standard automatics or Ruger single sixes? You ever spend any trigger time with them? Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I think it was probably in the early '80s or so. I, I started in my first experience with optics on a handgun. I had had a six-inch standard model, and I had the local gunsmith put a scope base on it and put one of the early. I think it was a Bushnell, like a one one and a half power or something like that mm -hmm. pistol scope on it. And man, I shot a lot of groundhogs and squirrels and rabbits and yeah. all kinds of stuff with that. That was kind of my start into the whole handgun hunting thing. I mean, as you know, I I really got serious about that handgun hunting deal for quite a few years, and uh, you know, still would be if I could see see the sights. Uh, but that was kind of what got me started in it. Was I read uh, what was the guy that went to Alaska and shot the the stuff with the two two four? You know, he, remember he'd ream out the the Model 17 Smith to a, to a uh, center fire. Oh, starts with, his last name starts I, with the, the G. Yeah, the, the caliber was a K Chuck. Yeah, K Chuck. K -Chuck. Yeah, Harvey K Chuck. Harvey, yeah, 224, Harvey, Harvey K Chuck. Yeah. You know, I can't remember the, the, the guy's name that wrote the book about that. Was he developed that cartridge? And uh, I just, you know, read that and I'm just like, I was hooked on handgun hunting, you know, yeah. from then on. Yeah, you know, I uh, always Al, wanted. Al, what was that? It'll come to you. Yeah, it's probably getting older. It's just, dude. I mean, it's not our Al Gore, but it was something very similar to that. Al Gorg. Al Gorg. Yeah. Al Gorg. Al Gorg. Yeah. And they remember he had a shoulder rig mm -hmm. that yeah. he was mm -hmm. made famous yeah. for carrying a hunting hang. Al Gorg. Yeah. By the way, that whole shoulder rig was made by A. E. Nelson, and they're still in business in Oregon as a holster company. Wow. They still make that holster. Um, but I uh, I dabbled in target shooting for a while, and I actually got. Um, Mike LaPlante, you remember Mike mm -hmm. LaPlante when yeah. he since passed away, but I actually, I ended up getting, when he passed from, it was, I, I got it uh, from his estate, a Smith 41, still have it. Mm -hmm. He shot it a lot. And I shoot it once in a while, and those things are spectacular. I oh, mean, yeah. no, just right. trigger wise, it's just what this thing you dream of, good sights, good trigger, guns running like a champ. 
Um, and I'll tell you a gun I think is a sleeper that I've, I've always had a weakness for is a little Beretta Jaguar, the mm-hmm. little 22s. Yep. They are incredibly reliable. Some of the most reliable 22 automatics I've ever seen. They're really accurate. They have good triggers. Way cool guns. Mm-hmm. You know, and the Israelis used them a lot, you know, and they're, yeah. they're a little hunting of the bad guys. But uh, cool gun. And I, every time I get one and, or, and, and shoot it, or my buddy shoot it, oh, find me one of those finally. Yeah. And they're really not easy to find. Mm-hmm. And the prices have inched up on them. But kind of a, a gun that's under the radar screen, but a cool little 22. Yeah, we're, we seem like keep staying on this 22 thing. Uh, don't you agree that for people starting out and shooting, that's the caliber they oh, need to start I, with? I still think a lot of people think I hear today. Well, you can skip that and go right to center fire. Well, if you're for most people, it's a good point to start with the 22. I tell people if you're going to start teaching your child or your wife or somebody new, that's one valid reason to own a 22. Yep, and. Uh, you know, I've got a shooting buddy out where I live in Idaho, and he bought years ago a pistol that you guys built for him with one of your 22 conversion units. And he wore that, I mean, he wore that thing out. And we give him a hard time, he shoots it all the time, but um, he just recently bought a, found another one on gun broker just to get the conversion unit. Hmm. So people ask me, what do you think about conversion units? They have a place. Hmm. And, um, there's something kind of neat if you say, well, I'm going to go out like where I live in the wintertime when you got two or three feet of snow, you're going to lose your brass until spring. Mm-hmm. So there are occasions where, you know, a conversion unit on a 1911 or now, I mean, a lot of companies make conversion units. Sig Sauer makes it for their line. Bretta's even got one for the 92. They do have a place where mm-hmm. you can say, I can still shoot and not worry about picking up brass and or if you introduce a kid or somebody new even even adults a lot of adults have never shot a handgun they're best starting out with a 22. yeah for the not only the lower recoil but the the lower sound of the report yeah because a lot of people start flinching not so much from the recoil but from From the the noise Yeah. yeah and um like i say i think 22 is a good beginning gun and fortunately for us the price of 22 ammo is now returning to normal yeah and i know all of us kind of quit shooting 22s a while back because the you know it wasn't available and so now that's returning and i hope we'll see kind of a rebirth in the interest of 22 because i still shoot them once in a while because you know what they're fun oh yeah they're blast to shoot yeah so i think for those of you watching gun guys uh don't forget a 22 handgun or even a 22 rifle i mean they've got uh, great potential, not only for having fun, but for getting new shooters started on the right foot. Thanks for tuning in, folks. If you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe to our uh, Wilson Combat YouTube channel, and uh, we'll have a lot of new stuff coming up in the future. Mm-hmm.